welcome and thank you for joining for another whiskey review today we're gonna take a look at the spring bank 18 2020 release actually it doesn't this is the uh november release yeah they the for some reason they had two 18 releases in 2020 mm -hmm. so first release was mostly bourbon with a little bit of port and a little bit of sherry i think i'd have to check this one is sherry bourbon i, I want to say we're almost 50 50 split i honestly Forgot to do the research before we started. I want to say this is 55.45. We'll put it in the description. 46% yeah. ABV, like Supreme Bay 18 normally is. Justin, this is a, I've, I've had this whiskey many times. I haven't had it recently, nor have I ever done a review on it, which seems strange. That is, yeah. And I've got a couple. I've got, a, I've got the other 2020 release. I've got a, believe it or not, I've got a 2014 release that they just keep showing up randomly locally, so I mm -hmm. just keep picking them up. Uh, but this one really impressed me, Mike. Mm -hmm. If you recall, I got this bottle, called you and Keith, and was like, guys, if you like Spring Bay 18, this is the one to get. Keith ran out and picked one up. Also, mm -hmm. I got a great price on it. What did you pick it up for? 120 Yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah. <clears throat> Beautiful, rich, light, I would say light gold. Gold yeah. minus one you color. You can definitely tell there is some sherry you know, Maturation color. in there. Probably not first fill. And as we know, Spring Bank always does natural color, unchill filter. Yeah, they do everything the integrity way. Yeah, the right way. All right, so getting into this, it's a lot of what I always remember of Spring Bank 18. A lot of funk. This is more funky than most 18s in my mind, Mike, because there's more sherry. And that's a lot of where the funk comes <clears> from <throat> on some of these uh, casks. There's obviously the natural Spring Bank funk, but mm -hmm. this has got sherry funk big time. Yeah, I mean, I guess in my mind, it's been a while since I've had the 18. It's funky. I guess mm -hmm. I didn't think that the other ones were less. I always kind of thought this was a funky well, whiskey. Well, you know, our buddy Keith, Malted Man Cave, go check mm -hmm. out his channel, guys. He tends to buy the Spring Bank 18s that are more sherry. Mm -hmm. So he sees higher sherry concentration, he buys them. So you probably have had a lot of them that are like this. You're right. Well, yeah. at some point, get around. I've got the first release from 2020, which has the port and a little higher bourbon content. Mm -hmm. That one's a little less funky. So maybe we'll get around to that one at some point. Yeah, I would have to. I would have to actually have one. But you're right. A lot of the ones. A lot of times I can drink a spring of eighteen is, is definitely with the malt and man cave. And speaking of a tasting note that I'm gonna steal from him is those uh, vinegar potato chips. And he's right. That is so prevalent in this eighteen year old. Absolutely. There's like a there's an oak woodiness, but I, mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain this, Mike. It's almost like instead of it being like a olfactory sense, I'm smelling. It's almost like a feel. And it's like imagine if like wood was like grooved. Uh -huh. I'm like feeling like grooved wood when I smell this. I don't know how to explain that in mm. any sense of the word, but it's just like a... So what I think you're saying with that, um, and I know what you're picking up, it's almost like you're in like a wood shop and they're sawing wood like into furniture or whatever. Yeah. It's almost like a twinge of cedar too. Yes, yeah, it, there's definitely some cedar in here. Like um, there's a, a local shop down the street and they do like a jewelry repair. And I remember I walked in there one time, they had these boxes like that, that I assume you would put like jewelry watches mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And they were like wood on the outside, but they were like lined with cedar <clears> and they were open. And you could smell them like right when you walked in the building, you could just smell that fresh cut cedar. But part of it was in the back was their workshop. Mm -hmm. You hear a saw go every once in a while yeah. back there just for a second while someone's making a cut. And there's that smell of fresh cut cedar that is unmistakable if you've ever worked around woods. Yeah, and then you, there's sugar cookie, there's sea salt. There is salt. Now, I get less sugar cookie with this one. It's very low. That, that I do with most spring banks. I think because that vinegar note is so predominant. Yeah, and that's, again, that's a sherry cask coming in here. There's a good bit of, it's, it's, there's like old world oak and again, that cedar oak. They're all, it's all just kind of playing and interwinding. Mm. Mm. And it's a little sour. But again, this is, again, it's one of those, like, I really appreciate the sourness of this particular uh, whiskey. Well, because you know, there was intent. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and again, they're all, all of the 18s are like this. All of them are. I mean, again, some are cleaner, some are sweeter, some are this, that, and the other. This one is more funky than most. And what, that's what I like about this one is that it's, to me, this is spring bank at its most, like, spring banky. <laughs> like, uh, like I, you know, if you think of spring bank, you are thinking about a bourbon cherry matured whiskey. Mm -hmm. They're all, you know, that's their core. That's been their the twelve year. That's the ten year, the eighteen year. Those have always been until recently. The twelve deviated, but it's always been sherry bourbon mm -hmm. with these kind of funky bourbons and funky sherry notes kind of coming in, and then that spring bank just malty funkness. I tell you what, 
The 10, it doesn't bother me, it's at 46. This is a whiskey that I really would like to see at a higher ABV. And I think that every time I, every time I nose and drink this whiskey. I really like everything they have. If they could just up, up it to 48, 49, just a little bit something mm -hmm. extra to drive it home. But again, it's a very nice, very well done, funky spring bank. It has a nice little vinegar chip note too, which I really like. What do you think of the palate? Oh man. So what I really get initially on here is this old world oak that I absolutely love. And then it transitions into classic spring bank. The sherry comes in, some younger oak notes come in. It becomes more of an 18, whereas like the first initial taste, I was like, oh my God, I'm getting like 25 year old whiskey here. And then comes in the sugar cookies, some salt. And you, as it continues progressing, you more and more realize 18 and not 25, but there's that upfront sweet oak gives me this remembrance of 25 year old whiskeys, which I think really made this one a winner for me. I agree with everything you said about it being that old, but I'll tell you what, I do know something that on the finish while you were talking that I remember is that lovely candied finish, especially on the sides and on the front of your tongue. Mm -hmm. And it's candied, then it just kind of goes right into a little bit of funkiness, a little bit of vanilla, mm -hmm. and at the very, very end, it comes back with like that vinegar potato chip note. God. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, this is a whiskey that leaves me wanting more. You know what this whiskey room is like? Mm -hmm. Um, you ever seen Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Remember how the first one ended, like on that big cliffhanger? Yeah. Like, oh, I can't believe you ended it right here. I can't believe you ended it right here. Like this is gonna be ninety <laughs> percent of where I wanted to go. Like, yeah. oh, this is a good whiskey. This is a good whiskey. Like, mm. the finish is a little look. short on this yeah, one. I want a tad more. You know, what's funny though is the finish is also a little too clean. Like everything about this whiskey is a little dirty. And then the finish is actually really clean. Every stuff of the way gets cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, the nose, yeah, obviously, it's the dirty part, dirty, yeah. right? And the palate, like I said, it, it, it's a little dirty, but not 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 crazy dirty. And then the finish, you're right, and it just comes back. I mean, that really really lasts for you. Again, on the front of the tongue, which is strange. Well, and you know, Mike, besides. as you notice, I've had this maybe I, I probably got this in December, so I've only had it for like eight months. I don't go through three me eighteens this fast usually. And you know why that is? Good because whiskey. the upfront flavor is so good. And then the finish kind of ends. I just want to keep going back and drinking it again because I want that upfront. You know, maybe it's genius design because I said like that little ring. That's the best cliffhanger <laughs> ever. Like that made you say, "I can't wait." You just want to go for it again, right? right? Exactly. It keeps. And this is a whiskey that I, I kid you not. Like normally when I have a you know when I drink, if I have five whiskeys, mm -hmm. or sorry, if I have five glasses mm -hmm. in a night. Mind you, they're small pours like this usually, but I have five different whiskeys. This is one I every time I pour this, I pour a second. Yeah. And it's just because it's, it's almost like, um, it's like oh. something they put in the bar that like, intentionally, like, you know, you eat like, pretzels and peanuts yeah. and then all of a sudden you, you take a sip. This thing, yeah, as it, soon as it finishes, I want another sip. Just like a vinegar chip. It beckons for another one. Uh, it's just, some <laughs> chip company made the, had the, uh, advertising slogan, you can't eat just one. Blaze, I believe. Yeah. And they were right. You couldn't. Um, yeah. But this whiskey is the same way. Like when I say it just leaves you want, like just something a little extra for you. I think Pringles did. Once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> Once you pop, you can't stop. Yeah. Either. It's a hard whiskey not to go back to and back to and back now, to. Now, you know, I wasn't thinking about that vinegar chip when you first said it, Mike. Mm -hmm. And I was smelling it and I was like, yay, ish. Mm -hmm. Water? That is dead on what this is. Yeah. It's it like really brought that out. It brought the oak down, though. It's like five guys' french fries with a bunch of vinegar. A lot of vinegar. So much vinegar. Mm. So they turn it sweet. It's so vinegarish. But the finish on the nose is actually clean. There's nothing clean about this nose finish. What are oh, you talking about? Dude, there's a clean vanilla oak note there Come at on. the end. Come on. It's, not, it's not clean. It's a funky, dirty spring bag. It's funky, dirty, and then there's clean vanilla oak, man, there at the end. It's vanilla oak that got ran through a chimney when it was already lit <laughs> for a month. I'm getting a distinct clean note there at the very end, but it's dirty up to that point. Yeah, great whiskey, great whiskey. You know, again, every time I go back to this whiskey, I'm like, why don't I drink this whiskey more? Like when you yeah, when you came in like 120 bucks, I'm like, eh. Yeah. I always say, and again, I always feel that way when it comes time to buy this whiskey. Every time I drink it, I have a good time with it. Because yeah, these are 240 in the states when you see them, and they're which is a little much for these. Mm -hmm. But man, 120. And I bought two. The funny thing was they didn't have a limit on this one when I first found it. So right. I just bought one when thinking about it. I thought, oh, they'll have plenty because I hadn't quite. You keep, you keep thinking that with spring bank and you keep being wrong. I do. And then... Every time I tell you, buy everything they have unless it's a 10. And then I went back and you keep underrating the 10. But anyway, 
We're gonna have to bring in newer tin. The tins have been getting better okay. each passing year. Anyway, no problem. Water has also cleaned up the uh, the palate, but it's also kind of thinned it out. Mike, I'm, I'm yeah, still yeah, enjoying yeah, it with yeah, water, but again, forty six leaves me wanting. Water on this one leaves me definitely wanting. It makes me wish I didn't put water in. Yeah. There's nothing the water um, did that made this better. Not nose, not palate, not finish. Not one thing. I mean, the nose is still just fine with water. It didn't wash out the nose. It's still um, great whiskey. And the palate is still got that nice sugar cookie sweetness, but it's just, it's brought it down. And, you know, Spring Bank at 46 is not as oily as I'd like it to be. It never has I agree. been. I agree. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. That's the hit. I mean, on the 21, 25, all of them, all of those Spring Banks, my knock on them is 46. And again, if you're doing, Spring Bank does everything right. You're right. They do everything right. But on the ABV, I think they do the minimum of what they can do right. You know why I say that? Mm -hmm. I've always kind of equated, you know, 45.8, 45.7 is the point where they're probably not chill filtering. Mm -hmm. Probably not. You know what I'm yep. saying? But then when you see a bunch of offerings at 46, I think you're doing the minimum as far as that goes. Yep. Now, three minutes are hard enough to get as it is. Hard enough to get as it is. Get ready to say, I don't have a bottle count on these, but these tend to be in the three, 4,000 bottle range. That's still not a lot. So it's actually, I mean, that's a pretty small release. It is, no, it's definitely a small release. It's a small release. Um, and I get it. I would rather, I would really go at 46 and be get able to them, get a bottle? A, a, multiple bottles of the 18, the 25, mm -hmm. the 21s. Then if it'd be a cash strength or 48 or 50, and it was just always hard to get them. And right. I, hardly I mean, if you were telling me there are 10,000 of these coming out every year, then I'd be like, guys, go of, 48. Uh, yeah, uh, up to ABV. Okay, we can, we can take a few less. But these are the easiest of the spring banks with... Over the ten mm -hmm. to get Agreed. still in today's market the twelve. Well, the twelves. I would say the ten, the twelve. And that's, I would say that's a third. That's, well, that's, the fifteen that's might be the easiest to get just because it's generally oh, the, green, the least yeah, no. popular. We've Do got you, an interesting fifteen-year versus coming up at some point, Mike. You haven't told you about it yet, but mm -hmm. we've got a fifteen versus coming up, guys. Can't wait. I, but I, um, I'll learn with the rest of you. But this one in particular, man, it's good whiskey. It is good whiskey. All right, so that puts me, I'm going to give this my highest whiskey score of the day, Dustin. 88 out of 100. And I was almost at 89. 88 and a half. Um, I'm an 88. Yeah, we're right there. I was, I, honestly, if it was a little richer, I, I could go 90. It's, the flavors are that good. It's it, just. Yeah. If it was cast strength, this would be, if this cast strength, this oh. would be a baseline 90 whiskey. Oh, yeah. And this would be a $500 whiskey at that point. If it was cast strength, and you paid 500, you'd be like, that's, that's probably worth it. Great whiskey, though, man. Yeah, beautiful. We're going to get into some more of these 18s, guys. Yeah. Uh, if you have any releases that... Uh, I don't have a lot of 18s, but you know, if you got some releases you want to hear about, we'll see what yeah, we can do. Yeah, a few people um, um, requested this 18, and we've been talking about doing it forever. Again, yeah. I, I don't know why I want to... And I've got, a source, I've got a source on an old 18, actually, old bottle style. I uh, might pick it up. I've been debating it, so let us know if I should pull the trigger, guys, and get you the review. You definitely should have pulled the trigger on that 13 local barley. But anyway... We want to know what you guys think if you had a chance of this November release of the 2020 Spring Bank 18. Dustin, until next time, what do we wish the folks? Happy drinking. We'll see you then.